So I almost always start in Sukhasana, but it's not really required. Um, so because I have tight ankles and I never stretch them, or don't stretch them much, I'm going to start out now in Virasana. But, uh, you know, you start in any uh, seated position you wish. So sit up straight. Rest your hands on your thighs. Close your eyes. Descend your thighs. Balance your weight evenly on your two sitting bones. Lengthen up through the front of your body. Move your arm bones back to bring your shoulder blades onto your back. Use that to keep your chest well lifted and your collarbones broad. Soften your neck and throat. Release your jaw. Rest your tongue into the base of your mouth. And use the next few moments to focus on your breath. Notice your inhalation, notice your exhalation. The effect that they have on the physical body. And then gently open your eyes. All right, come forward. Come on to your hands and knees. Spread your palms. Tuck your toes under. Lift your hips high. One of the Shwanas. So, in whatever position you started in, uh, most likely, I, I didn't look at everyone, but most likely you had bent knees. So now focus on opening up the backs of your legs by moving your thighs back, moving your heels back. Stretch your legs. As you move your thighs and your heels back, unless you're very flexible in the hamstrings, you're gonna lift the backs of the thighs up and tilt the butt bones up. At 
the same time, press through your hands. Through the pressure of your hands, the palm of your hand. Lengthen the sides of the waist, the sides of the torso. Relax your neck. Notice the weight in your hands. See if it's on the, if it's spread evenly through each finger and thumb. Evenly throughout the circle of the palm. And there's the weight on each foot. See if the weight is even between the big toe and the little toe side. And if we could push our heels down enough, we have kind of the same uh, feeling as we do in the hands, where the entire uh, place the foot touches the floor is pressing into the floor. And bend your knees, take your knees wide apart, sit back on your heels for Adama Fugvirasana. Child pose. All right. Grab a block or two if you have them. And then you're going to put the block on its back. And then you can have another block in your body or a blanket for your head. The first block will go under your shoulder blades. And the second block will be for your head if you need it. And rest your arms out to the side and press your thighs down. You want to feel like the block is lifting your chest, but not uh, the area at the base of your neck. So, not the tops of your shoulders. That part shouldn't lift. So, if that part's lifting, you need to scoop closer to the head side. And some, some of you are changing uh, the um, shoulder block, and that's fine. You can have it at any height. So don't forget about your legs. The key to back bends is in your legs. Press your legs into the floor. Don't let your feet roll out. All right, bend your knees, take your elbows to your sides, lift yourself up. 
So the next one's going to be very similar, except now you want the head block to be long so that rather than having your arms out to the side, you can have them over the head and ideally resting on the block like this. So you'll cross your elbows and rest your arms over your head. So you want your arms resting on something that can rest on your forehead if they won't rest on the block. Uh, if your head will hit the floor, then you can just move the block uh, away from your head and rest your arms on the block and your head on the floor. At the same time, press your thighs down. All right, change the interlock of your elbows. And then bend your knees. Lift yourself back up. Okay, so now it's the close up view. All right, so now I have a tall block. And you can have a medium block for your head. Now just watch for a second because the leg position is going to change if you're able. So if you can, you'll sit in Virasana. And then the first block goes between the shoulder blades. And the second block is for the head, like this. If you can sit between your heels in Virasana or close to it, I don't go all the way to the floor, but I'm pretty close. Um, then do straight legs again. And it's harder with straight legs to have the block this tall. So you'll just repeat the last one. All right, the thighs should be reasonably together. At least pointing in the same direction, if not together. All right, the arms go over the head. Yeah. That looks good, Chaya. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So Kathy, I will know if your feet are not active because they're the main focus of your camera. <laughs> uh, 
All right, change the cross of your elbows. You can rest them on your forehead, Chaya. They won't go down, yeah. And anyone else, they can rest your elbows on your forehead. They won't go down to the block. All right, bring your hands by your sides, lift yourself up. Stretch your legs out in Dandasana. All right, so um, Marsha, you will continue to use the block rather than do this next one, I'm pretty sure. Um, so this can be done with straight legs or uh, we are wrestling, we'll show it with straight legs first. So I bring my elbows down, lift my chest, take my head back and bring my head to the floor. Then I bring my arms overhead, grab the sides of the sticky mat and try to scoot in for more of a back bend. So more on the top of my head. Or in Virasana, little, it's actually a little easier in Virasana because you're a little bit off the floor. So I lift my chest, elbows down, bring my head down, reach overhead, pull on the sticky mat and work my way in. Very impossible. All right, so figure out what you're gonna do. You should start sitting up. <laughs> what are you either in Dandasana or in Virasana? So start in Dandasana or Virasana. And then walk your elbows back. So you're leaning on your elbows. And here, lift the chest like you had the block under your shoulder blades. Then put your head, the top of your head on the floor. And reach over the top of your head for the sticky mat and pull on the sticky mat to scoot in closer. Yes. All right. Then lift yourself back up. That's not one that will stay in for very long. <laughs> Stretch your legs out and done nothing. Press your thighs down, push your fingertips down, lengthen your chest. And then come over. Oh, there's something I want to do today. Um, I want to practice getting up off the floor. And sometimes we do it where we lift our arms up and we can't put our knees down. But this time, you grab a block and you hold the block. You can hold it like a baby. <laughs> and you can hold it between your hands. All right. Now, the, the way I get up off the floor, this may not be the way you get up off the floor, but I take my legs to the side and then I roll onto my knees and then I come into a half lunge and stand up. So try that and see if it works. Yeah, you can put them overhead too. Like, and roll your legs to the other side. Take your other leg forward and stand up. So, you know, the, the goal is to get up without coming onto your knees. But if that's not gonna happen, then try this way. 
All right. So that was a little interlude that I was thinking about the other day. So what what was what is the goal? I'm sorry, not to come up on your knees. Well, yes, to come up. You know, we've done this where we're sitting on something and we just put our feet down and we come up. Okay. Yeah. So that doesn't always work. Um, okay. So this is like an alternative to that that still trains us to not come up. Like that. <laughs> so if you can come up without using your knees or your hands, then come up that way. I'm using a block because I know that if I'm on the floor, nothing happens. You just, oh, there we go. Sometimes, but not always. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have a little bit of a sense of humor about it and that you might fall on your bum. I have to I have to turn out. Yeah, whatever you have to do is fine. Oh, go for it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So some people have an easier time coming from like a, a malasana position. As long as I have height, that's easier. But if I don't have height, it's easier for me to kind of come up into a cross-legged position. Anyway. <laughs> <That> is, <laughs> I need height and <laughs> everything. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I, I'm living with my parents and they're both in their mid to late seventies and I'm watching them get out, in and out of chairs and I'm like, okay, I need to remember to do this for me yeah. because I want to be able to get in and out of chairs. <laughs> All right. It's, okay. it's a lot easier to get up with crossed feet, even without any help on the bottom. Like at least for me, it's, it's a yeah. lot easier to just, yes. Yeah. Then with the oh my so yeah, so this is almost. <laughs> yeah, is this there you go, I almost yeah. Okay. <laughs> you guys. Okay. That was just a little interlude that I was thinking of the other day. Today, not the other day. All right. Stand up. I'm gonna put a block between my feet. Have another block for your hand. Place your palms on the block. Extend your block forward. Move your thighs back. Press your palms into the block like you're pressing them into the floor and now we're facing God. And then slowly lift the block up. Notice where the shoulders catch. For me, I, I should notice where the ribs start to stick out. Keep your neck and jaw soft as you raise the block over the head. And then slowly lower the block down. Sometimes this uh, 
movement of the clock feels like election results, that the end will never come. Release the bar. Alright, uh, let's do that. Have uh, some blocks at the back edge of your mat. You don't have to have them, but they're nice to have. Take your arms in front of your chest, take your arms and legs wide. Turn your right foot out. Take your right hand down, Trikonasana. Move your right hip forward, roll your left thigh out. Extend from your shoulders outward. So as you press down with your right hand, extend up through your left hand. So each arm gets longer and longer. Then press the feet away from each other. So each leg gets longer and longer. Press through your left foot, inhale, come up. Turn your right foot in, turn your left leg out. With an exhalation, bring your left arm down. Straighten your left leg, turn your, and bring your left hip forward as you roll your right hip back. Now from your breastbone through your fingertips, stretch out. So as the left hand presses down to extend that arm, the right hand moves up to extend that arm. Then press the feet away from each other to extend both legs. Press through your right foot, inhale, come out. Bring your toes to the front. Take your arm and legs together. Stand to awesome. Press your thighs back, spread your toes. Relax your shoulders down. Try to reach a chicken awesome. Bring your hands in front of your chest. Take your arms and legs wide. Bring your hands to your hips. Turn your right leg all the way out. Turn your left leg in. Keep your right hand on your hip. Take your left hand down. Move your right hip back, your left hip forward. Rotate your chest towards the wall behind you. Then from the pressure, of your back foot, pressing into the floor, extend your head away from that foot. Once you've turned all you can, lift your right arm up. Then pressing through your left foot, lift your left arm up and come up. Bring your hands to your hips. Turn your left leg all the way out, turn your right leg in. Take your right hand down next to your foot. Little toe, big toe side, 
whatever works. Now take your left hip back, your right hip forward. Rotate your chest towards the wall behind you. And from the pressure of your right foot, extend through the top of your head. Then lift your left arm up. Now focus on your right foot as you lift your right hand and come up. Bring your hands and your feet together. All right, back to the awesome. Press your thighs back. Lift your chest, release your shoulders. Parsh Bhakanasana. Take your arms and legs wide. Turn your right leg up. Bend your right knee. Take your right hand down to the brick or floor. Take your left hand on your head. Move your right hip forward, your left hip back. Rotate your chest towards the ceiling. Turn your right upper arm out so the inner elbow faces the same way as the knee. Then take your left arm forward, pull the shoulder back, and then bring it out over your head. Extend from the fingertips all the way down to your left heel. Now lift the left arm up, inhale, come up. Turn your feet forward. Now turn your left leg up. With an exhalation, bend your left knee, take your left hand down to the blocker floor. Move your left hip forward, your right hip back. Roll your right shoulder back. At the same time, turn the ivy elbow to face the same direction as your knee. That will externally rotate your shoulder and bring your shoulder into your back. Then take your right arm forward. Move your fingertips towards your shoulder and then take it out overhead. So from the fingertips to the heel, get longer. Then lift your right arm up, press the right foot, come up to standing, and back to Tadasana. Have weight in your heels. Quadriceps are lifting. Bring your hand in front of your tip arch Bring your hands in front of your chest. Take your arms and legs wide. Place your hands on your hips. Turn your right leg all the way out. Turn your left leg in. Bend your right leg. Turn towards the wall behind you. And actually, don't do that. Take both hands to the right leg and push it down. Then release the left arm and cross it over. And as you press with your right arm to move the right thigh down, work to get your left arm around. Keep your back leg straight. Now you should be facing the wall behind you and not able to see, but that's okay. You remember what we did on the last side where we took the arm forward and plugged the shoulder in, and then took the arm over the head. So do that here. If your back foot comes up, that's okay. 
All right. Now focus on your back foot as your stabilizer. Release your left arm and come up. Place your hands on your hips. Turn your left leg all the way out. Turn your right leg in. Bend your left leg. Place both hands on your left leg and push that thigh down. Then keep your left hand on there. Take your right arm across. Ooch yourself in. So if your back heel comes up, don't worry about that for now. Get as close in towards your thigh as you can. Then take your left arm forward, plug the shoulder back in, and take it out over your back. Focus on your back leg. And then you're going to lift your right arm off the floor and come back up. Take your arms and legs back together. Back to Tadasana. Take your feet hip width apart. Maybe a little wider if you're tight in the hamstring. Fold forward. You can grab the opposite elbow. Or rest your hands on your shins. Place your hands on your hips. Inhale, come all the way back up. Step your feet together. Tadasana. So that was your rest, by the way. Bring your hands in front of your chest. Take your arms and legs flat. We're going to go into Ardha Tadasana. Turn your right leg out. Take your right hand down, Trikonasana. Take your left hand on your hip. Point your elbow towards the wall behind you. And then have your elbow pull your left shoulder back as if somebody was pulling on your elbow. All right. So keep this turn of the chest as much as you can. Bend your front leg and step your back leg in. Move your right hand forward. All right, with the bottom leg bent, lift the foot off the floor, the back foot off the floor. I said the bottom leg. You have two bottom legs, I assume. All right, if you lost the spin of your chest, find it here with a bent front leg. So the right leg is bent, the left leg is straight. And once you've gotten all the turn you can get, press your right thigh back to straighten your leg. Now we're going to do that in reverse. And when you bend your right leg, you're going to reach back with your left leg so that when you come down, you'll be back in this uh, lunge position. So you can straighten your front leg, lift your arm up. And come back up. Other side. Turn your left leg out. Come into Utita Trikonasana. Take your right hand to your hip. Bend your elbow. Feel like you're being pulled from your elbow to open your chest. Bend your left leg, scoot your right leg in, take the block forward and stop there. All right, now you're gonna lift the bottom leg up, but the bottom leg, the right leg up, but 
keep the left leg bent. Now rotate your chest here. And then once you have your chest as far rotated as you can, you're going to straighten your bottom leg. Now it's a bottom leg. All right. Now you reach back with your left leg and you bend your, no, your right leg. You're going to reach back with your right leg as you bend your left leg. Come back into the Parshvanasana, then back into Trikonasana. Don't forget it. And then pull yourself back up. Turn your toes to the front. Take your arms and legs together. Tadasana. Okay, Rita Arjunasana. Bring your hands in front of your chest. Are leaving the room. Take your legs away. Up. All right. So if you're like me and you have a wall behind you, you might need to put your hands on your hips. Turn to the right. Now this you come into through revolved triangle. Um, so I'll show it really quick if you want to. So I come into revolved triangle and then revolved half moon. Back to revolved triangle. And then back up. So I'll talk you through it though. All right. So you bring your left hand down, rotate your chest. So you're in revolved or Pavarotta Trikonasana. Rotate, rotate, lift your top arm. This would be your right. Now take your right hand to your hip. Move the block onto the big toe side if it wasn't there already. And bend your front leg. Step your left leg in, move the block forward. All right, so just like on the other side, we have to turn, we're going to turn the chest first. You don't have to turn the chest first before lifting the leg up. Then lift your left leg up as high as possible, keeping a bent right leg. Rotate your chest some more, and then finally straighten your right leg. Now you have to figure out how to come back down. I'm not going to let the arm up. It's just decoration. As into Paravita Trikonasana. So bend the front leg, the right leg, reach back to the left. Move the block to little toe side if you do little toe side. Move the block back. Come into Paravita Trikonasana. Then press in through your left heel. Come all the way up. Second side. Hands on the waist, or you can keep them out. Turn to the left. Take your right hand down. Come into Paravita Trikonasana. Then take your left hand on your hip, or your waist, or your sacrum, that area. Take the block to the big toe side of the foot. Bend your left leg. Move your right hand uh, a little bit forward at the foot, maybe a foot, a foot forward, forward of the foot. And then step your right leg back in. in. Turn your chest. So turn it here. It's easier to turn here than once you're up. You don't have to do balance here. You can turn. Then you can keep this turn as you lift the back leg. Keep this turn as you straighten your left leg. Then try to keep this turn as you bend your left leg, reach back with your right leg, and come into Paravita Chikanasana. Lift your left arm up, and windmill back up. Take your arms and legs together. All right. Take them apart, take your hands on your hips. Prasarda Bhadatanasana, elbows back. Exhale, pull it forward, bring your hands to the floor. Walk your hands back, lower your head towards the floor.
Walk your hands forward. Look up. Place your hands back on your waist. Buttocks toward your heels. Come back up. Take your feet together. All right. Sit down. So, uh, I will scoot a lot closer to the camera. Uh, you're gonna have an interesting view for a few seconds. Uh, but, um, so, in, you can either do headstand or headless hip lift, headstand or you're um, in dog pose. Um, so that looks like this. But if you're doing headstand, and um, I noticed that Schumacher always teaches how to set up for headstand, just in case there's somebody there. Let's see if I can do this without being too weird. So I interlock my fingers. Ah, I should show it this way. All the way. My elbows are directly under my shoulders. I press my wrist down. You know, if you know it, you don't have to watch. Press the crown of my head, put the crown of my head right in between my hands, and then walk in. And then if it's your first time doing this, you'll be doing it against the wall, and you'll lift one leg up. And then you'll lift the other leg up, and possibly lift both legs up. And then once you're up, you have to remember to press your forearm to the floor and lift your shoulders away from your neck. When you come down, rest with your head down. Or use whatever device you need. Mm -hmm. So Chaya, you can walk in and lift one leg up. Try to lift it straight. Yeah. And then switch sides. Yeah. And then come down when you need to, Chaya. Um, let me look. Yeah, okay, so uh, Kathy, I think your right arm is closer to your head than your left, but your your hips are pretty good over your, your torso. You just have to uh, push more outward with your right arm. Yeah, all right. And then Bob, your heels are coming forward. It looks like, yes. I know you're trying to balance, but. Um, let's see. Uh, Karen heels back. Sopo, uh, heels a little bit to your left. Yeah, and then your left elbow is further out than your right. Come down when you're ready. Rest with your head down.
Full arm balance. Or handstand. Or elbow pose. Notice the weight on each hand. So I almost always have more right up, weight on my right arm. It's a lot stronger than my left, but it's only by put, having all the weight on my right arm, I'm only making that or worse. You can do L pose. You can put your hands on the wall, move your hips back. You can do pinch my rasana. If you do pinch your rasana, your hands better not come together unless you have a block. <laughs> Good job, Bob. Excellent. There we go. So what's up? Yeah, got these up. So ideally you stay as long as you can. How many times I do that, I'm not sure. <laughs> but that's the ideal, I don't know. And then you do it one more time. So do at least twice. and possibly kicking up with the other leg. If you're just learning to kick up, then kick up with the same leg until you can kick up without a bolster or fairly reliable. Or you can just rest if you've had enough. <laughs> okay. One more shot. There we go. Okay. Everyone come down. Does anyone not have a chair? If you don't have a chair, uh, then you can do Ustrasa. So if you don't have a chair, you will do cat pose. But those lucky enough to have a chair can do Three, five, three, two, done. That's another chair. So I scoot all the way through the chair. I have a sticky mat. The sticky mat pulls my shirt, but hopefully underneath that, it also pulls the muscles of my back towards my hips. When I straighten my arms, it pulls my shorts a little bit until I come over the chair. And I hold on to the sides of the chair and pull down. After I've done this for a while, I reach through the chair and pull on the back of the chair. If the flexibility allows, you can straighten your legs. And then if it's okay for you, you can take your arms overhead. If you're doing, oh, we come up, you have to sit on the chair. You pull down with your elbows, pull down with your hands, press your elbows into the chair, and lift yourself up and raise your shoulders. All right, so you're either doing Dvipada, those variations, those arm variations, and you can go in between those. Like if you get tired of having your arms over your head, you can grab the chair again. 
If it's too much to straighten your legs, you can bend your knees again. If your feet won't reach the floor, then you're short. <laughs> or you're too far through the chair or both. Yeah, if your hands won't reach the floor now, so far you're a pretty good backbender. So I would try pushing further through the chair and your hands might reach the floor. And Chaya, you're in a really good position to grab the sides of your mat. Um, so you can grab the sides of your mat and, no, 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 the one that is next to your hands. No, uh, hands overhead. Grab those, yes, and push it away from you. Yeah. So if your sides of your mat are near, you can do that. There we go, Our hands are down. All right, to come back up, bend your knees. Bend your knees, the knees are the, yes, that end. And then make sure you're sitting on the chair, press your elbows into the chair, lift yourself back up. And sit up straight for a little bit. All right, prepare yourself for shoulder stand. So the unfortunate thing about getting a chair out for, or maybe the fortunate thing, getting a chair out for uh, Dvipada is you're like, oh, well, look, I can do shoulder stand with a chair. So you could do shoulder stand with a chair. Take your back to your knees to the chair. Hold out with the back to your knees so you don't even need to use your hands until you're close to the pile of blankets. And you can rest your shoulders on the pile of blankets. And then lift your legs up. Like this. Or like this. Come down, tuck your chin, and slide out. Right. Or you can do regular shoulder stand, and I'll show that one as well. I like to show it with a chair for Halasana. So those that know what to do, you go ahead. You can just hear me talking in the background. So for my flexibility of neck, I use four blankets. I've also come to like, especially on this top floor, something under my head. So I will take, once I get to the top blanket, I'm using alternating colors that you can see. Nice stack of blankets. Some people like to stagger them a little bit. I like them straight up and down. Um, it's really a preference. Then I take the very top part and put it over uh, where my head's going to go. I have some blocks nearby, so I'm gonna use them for a landing pad when I come down. All right. And I have the chair about an arm's distance away from my shoulders. So I can grab the chair, but it's not, and my elbows aren't that. All right. And then I lay back on my support. My head is on the floor. My shoulders are a little bit uh, closer to my feet than the edge of the blanket, about a thumb distance. So I hold on to the side of the mat, and I'm gonna flip my legs over my head and land them on the chair. And then from here, I roll my shoulders under, lift my hips high, bend my elbows and take them as low down my back as possible, meaning as close to my shoulder blades. I move the skin of the body up to remind myself that that's 
the direction I'm going. And then one leg at a time, or two legs at a time. I come into Salama Sarvagasana, supported shoulder stand. I usually, before correcting anything in myself and others, I take a breath here just to notice how it feels. And then I usually work, <laughs> I usually work on my head first. So uh, the jaw, the neck, I make sure all that's relaxed because with someone with a tight neck, chances are the thing that's gonna go wrong is I'm gonna grip my neck and my jaw and that's only gonna make it worse. I take a moment there. And then I can move on to the other areas of the base, which are the shoulders and the arms. And I press the arms down. And as I press the arms down, I get a little bit of lift in the rest of the body. And then because it's easier to <laughs> lift a straight noodle than a wobbly noodle, I activate my legs and make them less to noodle like. Uh, the other thing I like to, uh, the metaphor I like to think of is if you've ever picked up a child that has not wanted to be picked up, that's like picking up your body and shoulder stand when it's all loose. And that's basically what they do, they get all loose and you're having to pick up dead weight. But if they want to be picked up, they stretch up. So you want to be picked up off your shoulders, so stretch up through your feet. And then do a little navel gazing. Even if you're in chair shoulder stand, you stretch up through your feet, by the way. And to come down, make your feet over your head, either onto the chair or on the floor. And you can hold on to the, if you're using the chair, you can hold on to the chair, or you can hold on to your toes. And bend your knees, look towards the chair, and slowly roll out. Be there for a moment. And then scoot towards your head side and rest your shoulders on the floor. Bend your knees in towards your chest, roll to your side, lift yourself up. Alright. Mary, just one question. The sure. foot and shoulder stand, it's not in a full point. It's in that kind of high heel shoe. Position. Oh. Yeah, I like the high heel shoe position. Um, or maybe not spiked heels, but you know, some kind of yeah, and my high heels. Yeah. So I kind of like this. Is it more so in that position than in headstand? No. They're the same foot. Yeah. Um, some people teach headstand like the opposite of Tadasana where the foot would be completely flat. Uh -huh. um, but I like the extension of the foot just because it's easier for me to concentrate on working the muscles of the leg. Mm -hmm. So it's really not a 
I don't do it as much for the foot as I do for the leg, but if you, all right, so come into Dandasana. And I'm gonna point my feet at you. Uh, actually, no, I'm gonna point a little bit to the side. All right, now have your feet pointing straight up like you would be if you were standing on the floor. So it's really hard to work your toes here to do what they would do standing on the floor, right? They either pull back or they go forward or they kind of get floppy. But to make the toes, like for me, these two uh, middle guys are further back than the, the surrounding guys. And uh, so for me, getting those two middle guys in line is, is very difficult. But if I extend the foot a little bit, then they're all kind of going in the same direction. Mm. Um, so that, that's my thought on that. That's why I do it. Um, now, if you bring them uh, like back to Tadasana foot and you curl the toes back, then they'll all do kind of the same thing. Mm. But that's just, uh, actually this guy never touches the floor. He's a bit of a prima donna. She's a bit of a prima donna. She doesn't like to touch the floor. Yeah, it engages the whole leg differently. You get yeah. more length <laughs> when you lay the toes. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you. Sure. But I think both of them are correct. So, um, all right. So let's do Bar Baradvajasana. We're going to turn to the right. So um, you're going to put your right buttock on something, and then take your legs to the left. So that the uh, left leg is in Virasana and the right leg is in Sukhasana. And the, the left leg is on top of the right. Now I need a block behind me as well. And if you're also a member of the T-Rex club, you'll need a block behind you. But if you're not that high up or if you're on blankets, you probably won't. Okay, lift your arms up. Rotate to your right, take your left hand down outside your thigh, your right hand down behind, and turn. Now sometimes uh, shoulder stand for me and for others can be hard on the neck. So I like to turn my head to the front when I do a twist. And the reason I think this is more effective than turning your head back is that um, the way the shoulders are locked into the body in the twist. So you can try turning your head to the other side and see how that feels. Then bring your head to the center, bring yourself back to the center, and then switch sides. So now the, the right leg is in Virasana, the left leg is in Sukhasana. And these are lined up. My legs were a little thinner, then these would be a little closer together. Lift your arms up, turn to your left, take your right hand down, left hand down behind. And first, keep your head on center and turn your torso. Then turn your head toward your right. Then turn your head to your left. And then put your head on straight and return to the front. Stretch your legs into Dandasana. Lift your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Grab whatever you're going to grab and fold all the way forward.
Inhale, come back up. And lie down for Shavasana. So in Shavasana, like shoulder stand, I roll my shoulders under. Extend my legs out. And rest into the floor. The rest of the weight of your body into the floor. Soften your neck and throat. Release your jaw. Rest your tongue into the base of your mouth. And use the next few moments to focus on your breath. Deep in your breath. Bend your knees. Bring your knees in towards your chest, roll to your side. And lift yourself back up to seated. Take your arms wide, lift your chest, bring your palms together in front of your heart. Think of something you've heard before. Namaste. Thank you all.